We got to watch the Berries play this season. And uh, what do you think about the Berries as we head into the uh, third game of the season? Well, I think that uh, it comes down to leadership. I, you know, I didn't go, go watch last night. Uh, spent a lot of time at the bank this week, uh, Logan Sports Savings Bank, and taking care of our community, other as aspects of what I do. But, uh, you know, I, I stayed at home last night, and I followed you on Twitter, Steve. So thanks for tweeting and being there and being on the radio. And uh, I, I think that Logan Sports leadership, uh, the young players they have, are going to have to step up. And you've got uh, you've got some firepower for sure. Uh, I think it's going to come down to smart play and turnovers uh, for them for throughout the season. And playing great defense, boxing out those those key fundamentals you think in high school, boxing out, grabbing rebounds, uh, not giving up second chance opportunities for the boys. I do think that this boys, uh, the Logan Sports Savings Bank boys Invitational, the 22nd, 23rd, uh, right before Christmas is going to be. I feel like it's going to be a competitive tournament. Yeah, and uh, when are those times? Uh, for the boys uh, yeah, they're the same times, I believe as the girls tournament so i think the consolation and championship game i'm guessing are going to be kicked back a little bit so they can hold that championship here in the bowl for the jv game but uh the first night is 6 and 7 30 ish i i think that 7 30 is always slided to almost eight but it just depends on how how many fouls you have in that first game you know <laughs> so but uh you know what i'm doing a lot of basketball these days steve so yeah yeah i heard that uh you've got quite the coaching record so far so uh, yeah i'm undefeated so <laughs> I'm, uh, I think I'm, we've got 11 games in, and I played two today, and so I'm 13-0 and 0 as a basketball coach. I, get, I think I'm going to give up soccer. <laughs> I, I highly doubt that. Yeah, I highly doubt it, too. I've been coaching soccer for uh, over 17 years. <laughs> well, you're you're off to a really good start, and uh, your sons are doing an incredible job. So really yeah, I'm proud of them. I've got, I got some great kids on my team. i got, got some great parents that you know are committed to having their kids show up for practice and, and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, I, I, sports has made a huge difference from my oldest to all the way down to my youngest kids' lives, and and not just allowing me the opportunity to coach and watch them, but they've learned a lot of valuable life lessons with sports. So uh, I, I thank God for what what He gives us in that. Yeah, for sure. But, but well, we're looking forward to uh, the rest of this night, and uh, we appreciate the bank sponsoring this event, Lone Sports Savings Bank, Cass County Invitational. And uh, we'll let you resume your duties for the well, evening. Are we uh, got to go to a break? Oh, uh, we will. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to stick around until you come back from the break. Is that all right? All right, sure. All right. So this is uh, Josh Hopper and Steve Isaacs, also Joe Stetz. For, this is the Lotus Sports Savings Bank, Cass County Invitational on 1230 WSAL. This is Rex Bessner from Logan Sports Savings Bank, and I really enjoy a good basketball game. In order to win a game, whether it is basketball or the game of life, the winning teams generally have to make a lot of tough decisions. I also understand buying a home, whether it's your first or last, is a major decision. Let the winning team at Logan Sports Savings Bank help lead you in the right direction, whether you're fixing up your current home or purchasing the home of your dreams. Just stop by or call us at Logan Sports Savings Bank. Logan Sports Savings Bank. The Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Tourney continues with the boys' basketball teams on Friday, December 22nd. Pioneer will play Logan Sport, and Caston will play Lewis Cass. The consolation and championship games will be played on Saturday, December 23rd at the Berry Bowl in Logan Sport. The fun and excitement continues with this old-fashioned rivalry of county schools playing for the Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Tourney Championship Trophy. Logan Sports Savings Bank leading the way. This is Steve Isaacs at the Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Invitational, and I am joined by the legend, Josh Hopper from Logan Sports Savings Bank. And uh, we're gonna talk to him a little bit about about their bank. Uh, what's some of the things that your bank's been able to do for the community here in Logan Sports? Yeah, so the bank has been sponsoring Art on the Avenue for, gosh, I think over 20 years. Here in the community, we have about 29 employees that are involved in over 30 organizations 
not just their church organizations, like things like United Way, the school system, coaching, uh, different, not just one school, but we have all over. Uh, we even have somebody coach at McConaughey. So uh, we're, we're very diverse in what we do in the community and trying to support it, boards and committees and things like that. And, uh, you know, we've been coaching, doing this basketball tournament for 14 years now. Uh, wow. So we've uh, had different teams in it from Pioneer, Lewis Cass, Logan Sport, uh, Cast in Peru came in for off and on over the years. And um, we've also uh, done a lot for our community is meeting people's financial needs, Steve. So uh, we have a Facebook page, Logan Sport Savings Banks on Facebook. And we try to talk about the things we're doing, but uh, we also try to inform about cybersecurity and things that are important to protect your parents or protect your kids. And uh, we have free online banking, free bill pay. Uh, we do online mortgage applications, so if you're thinking about buying a house or refinancing, maybe uh, do some home improvements or things like that, you can do it right from our website. We have a mobile app. Most people don't think we have a mobile app because we're a community bank here that's one office in Logansport. So we have that. We can do mobile deposit. We have Pop Money, which is kind of like a Venmo thing, uh, right from our mobile app. It's uh, pretty cool. We have free student checking and savings accounts, so if you got a high school kid, they do have to have a parent on there with them, but we offer that for free. Uh, we offer a lot of accounts for free if you have a direct deposit in them. And uh, we have ATMs uh, at the courthouse here in Logansport because they don't take debit and credit cards. And we have one uh, at our office on 723 East Broadway and then one out on Mall Road at the H&R Block Building. Wow. It's an impressive uh, list of products that you guys carry. And uh, we once again want to thank you for uh, sponsoring oh, uh, us. What did you get me for Christmas, Steve? Well, you have to Did wait say for Christmas yet. Did you save for Christmas? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. Well, we have a Christmas club account. Oh, wow. It, it's kind of a neat thing. that You come in and make deposits or have a direct deposit into that every every week or every other week. And uh, in October, we send you a check in the mail. Wow, that's so, a very cool service. Yeah, so it's a neat thing. This holiday season, you think about what am I going to do for next year to save for Christmas so you don't use your credit card. So. Steve, I really appreciate the radio station, what you guys are doing. Great sportsmanship out here for the first game. We hope we see a great turnout uh, from all the Barry fans and uh, the Lewis Cass fans here. And uh, we will see you again on the 22nd and 23rd. And I'll probably see you a lot sooner than that. And Joe, Joe I'm going to pass this mic back to you, buddy. I appreciate you letting me take your mic for a little while. All right. So once again, thank you to Josh Hopper from the Logan Sport Savings Bank. And uh, I'm joined once again by the sassy spark, Joe Stetz, as we get ready for this game between the Logan Sport Lady Berries and the Lewis Cass Kings. Well, the, the, the bad news, I missed out on hearing you and, and Josh out. The good news, I got to hear the Bay City Rollers. So that uh, <laughs> that's always a good thing. I was at the, uh, uh, the Bay City Rollers tribute band last night. That's why I wasn't at the, the Logan Lewis oh, Cass. Nice. I, I backstage pass, I couldn't pass it up. So, uh, but this is this is this is neat that Logan Sport Savings Bank and has has gotten. Uh, Partnered up with the with the four county schools for this tournament. Uh, it's it's been a it's always a, a lot of fun. I was I look forward to this tournament every year. I know you do too. Yeah, I really do. To have a you know we don't have the the old single class basketball sectionals like we used to. So you know we don't have all these schools coming and playing in that. So it's nice to get all the community together. It's kind of like a big family reunion, and uh, you know I really enjoy it. And you know thanks to the bank for sponsoring it all these years. And while you were talking to Josh, I had a chance to talk to Emily Brooke. Uh, as you as you said, uh, it was just precautionary. She's she's fine. They just yeah. held her out just to, to precautionary. So so that's certainly good news. Uh, uh, just a, a lot of fun though that uh, that consolation game. Pioneer winning 41-39. We mentioned uh, I think a couple times throughout the, the broadcast of that first game. If the, if the championship game's half as good as the as the uh, consolation game, we're gonna have quite a quite a ball game. Uh, Logan Sport uh, obviously the favorite. 4A going against 2A, uh, but. Uh, you just wonder if uh, Cass got a little bit of uh, confidence uh, from that big win against Cass, and who uh, I, I was thoroughly impressed with their confidence the way they played uh, in, in that consolation game, coming up just two points short, uh, making a couple of free throws here or there. Uh, those uh, early turnovers uh, to start the game really put them behind the eight ball. Yeah, really, Pioneer set the pace of the game pretty well, was turning the ball over, but cast it, able to, to rebound. And uh, Emily Holt with a huge game brought her team back, and just a uh, you know, a freak foul there at the end of the game. Pioneer was able to shoot free throws to get the victory, or that game was going to overtime. So, couldn't ask for a bunch in the opening game. Here in this game, both teams kind of struggling to get going. Lewis Cass, 1-8 and eight on the season. And uh, their only win was 
go in the first round against Caston in that 42 to 22 game. Logan Sport now two and four on the season as they really look to get going as they are heading into conference play. Um, what can you say about these two teams tonight? Well, I tell you, uh, this is always a, a big uh, matchup when this when uh, Lewis Gas and Logan Sport go at it. Regardless of the sport, we saw you saw a very spirited uh, battle last night uh, at Lewis Gas. Uh, with the Kings uh, coming up just a little bit short after a, a good three quarters before a late run uh, by the Logan Sport Bears pulled that off. Uh, as you mentioned, the Lady Kings really struggling on the season uh, winless before uh, they saw the cast and comments come into play uh, on Wednesday night. So uh, you, you never know. Uh, obviously, Logan Sport, the, the big favorite, especially the way they uh, blitz Pioneer on on Wednesday night, 92-52, Ellie Deardorff unconscious from behind the three-point line. Uh, just a sophomore, Ellie Deardorff. Uh, I have a feeling she's going to get some uh, D1 offers before her career is uh, all said and done here at Logan Sport. Yeah, she's been lighting it up in school basketball and on the AAU circuit for years. Came in, earned a starting spot as a freshman, and has done a really solid job. This Logan Sport Barry's offense averaging 53.7 points a game, and uh, they're hoping to raise that average tonight. Uh, in this game against the Lucas Cats. And Logan Sport led by Olivia Pearson, averaging 14 points a game. Ellie Deardorff, 12.7 points a game. Uh, Taylor Pasquale at 12 points a game. And uh, Megan Venn at 6.7 points a game. Megan Venn, one of the finest defenders in the whole North Central Conference. I've seen her shut down some really solid players in the past. So, you know, Logan Sport, like you said, looks to be the, the decisive favorite. You know, one thing, looking at the Lewis Cass roster, it's only like their bench gets real deep. They only have six players listed on the varsity roster, so it seems, uh, you know, conditioning plays a factor in this game tonight, too. Yep, and the Logan Sport Berries uh, with that 92-52 win against Pioneer on Wednesday night. Five players in double figures. Uh, our, our good friend, Milt Hess, when he, was, when he talks to coaches, the coaches always say, you know, I'd like to get that third player in double figures. Well, Logan Sport did them two better with five players in double figures. Uh, Olivia Pearson, uh, Jillian Rodriguez, uh, just a, a total team effort. And uh, I was impressed with what I saw out of Pioneer in that first game. To beat that team by 40 points, but that, that, that's an yeah. impressive victory. Yeah, it really is. And you just hope, you know, if you're Logan Sport and, you know, you're expected to win this game, you just want to, you know, run some positive plays, get some good momentum going. Maybe this is an opportunity to work on some things, um, you know, that you've been struggling with. As you head into to even tougher competition, and at Lewis Cass, you know, they're going to be up for this game. They're going to be looking to pull the upset. And really, you know, they've, they've got nothing to lose here, uh, you know, heading into this game tonight. Absolutely. And this can help only help them prepare them uh, as, as they get ready for the, for the Hoosier Conference uh, play and, and into the sectional. So we will uh, step aside for a break. When we return, we will have the opening tip and the starting line here of this championship game between Logan Sport and Lewis Cass. You're listening to the Logan Sport Savings Bank Cass County Invitational on 94.9 FM, 1230 AM, WSAL. There are many banks to choose from, and most of them are fine for most people, but a bank that understands business, more importantly, your business is a whole other animal. We are where business people like you find financial solutions to keep your business strong by offering unique solutions and helping with daily cash flow needs, fund equipment purchases, improvements, and expansion plans. Logan Sport Savings Bank has business cash management services to help keep your business running smoothly. We offer businesses innovative services like remote deposit capture that lets you make your daily deposit right from the convenience of your own desk, and standing behind every loan is the friendly customer service of the Logan Sport Savings Bank team. We are local business professionals with the expertise your business requires. If your business needs a bank that is not part of the herd, you need Logan Sports Savings Bank. Call us today at 722-3855 or visit us on the web at www.logansportsavings.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Savings Bank Cass County Tourney continues with the boys basketball teams on Friday, December 22nd. Pioneer will play Logansport and Caston will play Lewis Cass. The consolation and championship games will be played on Saturday, December 23rd at the Berry Bowl in Logansport. The fun and excitement continues with this old-fashioned rivalry of county schools playing for the Logansport Savings Bank Cass County Tourney Championship Trophy. Logansport Savings Bank leading the way.
beautiful uh, rendition of the national anthem. Uh, I think they said his name was Schulte. Okay. Right but uh, excellent job as we prepare for the starting lineups here, Joe. And before that, uh, they played back up again in Indiana, which is what they always do at the Barry Bowl. The first time I've heard that since the passing of Jim Neighbors, uh, who tra you know, sadly passed away at the age of 87 earlier this week, synonymous yeah. uh, Jim Neighbors with the, that song as played at the Indy 500. So uh, uh, an homage to, to one of the greats uh, in American uh, pop culture over the last half century. Yeah, it, it really is. And uh, my kids haven't quite caught on to how awesome the Andy Griffith show is. So. Uh, uh, he made me crack up a lot over the years. Yep. And, and I really like Gomer Pyle USMC also with Sergeant Carter. I, I really enjoyed yeah. that show as well. So oh, we're not we're not dating ourselves too much by, by this discussion, are we? So not, not me. <laughs> just, just me. Okay. So there we go. So the Lewis Cass Lady Kings, uh, the road team uh, with the road uniforms with uh, white numbers, the various uh, home uniforms. So, uh, again, Blake Isaacs has failed us. At least I believe he's failed us in the starting lineup, so unless uh, you're privy to some information that I'm not. I, I am not at this time. I'm, I'm pretty sure uh, Ellie Deardorff and Olivia Pearson will, will be uh, starting. Yes. Yeah, we can see right now, we can see the, the young ladies on the bench right in front of us. Thank you, courtside. So thanks to Brian Strong. We see Megan Ben also. So, uh, 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 so number 14 for the Lewis Cass Kings, the junior, Megan Bishop. I saw her uh, on the softball field. She's a heck of a ball throw. Number 21, the junior, Mia Martin. Number 12, Peter Ford, Mallory Minnick. Number 32, senior forward, Madeline Hoff. And finally, number 34, senior forward, Abra Hummerhouse. So, I'll, I'll, I'm glad you got that, uh, got, got that name. Uh, that's an uh, un unusual name. Barely put it on the score sheet. So. And Senior, 5'5", five, five, guard, Megan Ben. Number 11, junior, 5'8", forward, Taylor Pasquale. Number 14, senior, 5'5", five five, point guard, Olivia Pearson. Also, number 24, sophomore, 5'3", five guard, Ellie Deardorff. And finally, and I believe looks like that's... it's going to be Emily, right? Yeah, Emily. 50, Crichton. sophomore, five foot ten, averaging 2.8 points a game. Emily Cripe. So the Lady Berries, Coach uh, Coach Cooper's done a, done a heck of a job. They had a, a rough start last year, really got caught fire in the second half of the season. They've got high hopes for this season. Yeah, uh, Coach Cooper, 16 and 41 in her four years here, but I think she's done a, a really good job of. Uh, Rebuilding this Logan program, uh, Mike Collins, 23 and 55 in his fourth year with the Kings. And the tip goes to the Berries. Olivia Pearson across 10 second line as she'll set up the offense. Emily Kreit flashing to the high post. She'll look to the corner to Taylor Pasquale. Nice pass down into Emily Kreit. She'll dish it back out. Pearson at the free throw line and Emily Deardorff will reset the offense up top. Like one, two, two, uh, zone defense being utilized by the Lady Kings so far. Logan Sport uh, able to get it into the high post, though. She looks to, to Megan Ben, who looks to Olivia Pearson. She drives the lane on the left side and is able to score for the Berries. So just less than 30 seconds in, the Lady Berries with the first points of the night. They're Ball. also in his zone defense, looks like. Ball top. Martin over to the wing and now down to the post. They were trying to feed Madeline Hoff. But that's going to be off the Kings, and it will be... The Berry's ball now. Lewis Cass setting up a 2-2-1 two, two, press. Yep, three, three quarter court pressure. Ellie Deardorff, point guard handling it, gets does breaks the press nicely. Oh, Deardorff passes it up ahead, but it's going to be picked off by Hummer Akaus, and the Kings will bring it up. Megan Deshawn crosses the half court line. She'll go to the wing over to Minnick. Minnick looks down. A nice flash cross by Hummer Akaus, and she's going to draw the foul from Megan Ben. Well, that was a good half court set that time from the Lady Kings. Good. Uh, Action away from the ball. Hummer across moving without the ball. Got open in the paint. And uh, man, that's, man, that was before the shot. Boy, I, man, I can't believe that. Wow. Wow. Uh, Coach Collins, uh, a little of disbelief as well. That certainly looked like that was, must have, uh, contact must have occurred before the, the whistle so, that we saw. So Martin, oh, nice pass by Martin to a cutting 
Come her cows, Dave. She's going to draw a shooting foul this time. All right, referee. I, I was shooting last time, and you didn't give me free throws. <laughs> so this time, definitely no no question about it. So a uh, foul on Olivia Pearson. So already two fouls on the Berries uh, just over a minute into this conference. So Hummer Cows with her first shot and just barely off, get a little front of rim. That's a nice looking rotation on that free throw, just left a little bit short. But she, she will get one more. And she'll let it fly. And that one's front rim also. Nice rebound there by Martin, just a little bit short. And it, the Berries will retrieve it going to yep. be Rodriguez, and she draws a triple team and ends up turning it over here over the, in front of the Berry's bench. Now, the team over may go against Julian Rodriguez, but if he's got a help they saw that yeah. she was going to come to the ball to help her out. Exactly. So take it on the side. Martin once again taking out and a nice pass, but it's going to be picked up by Beardo from the pass break. She goes ahead to Olivia Pearson to Rodriguez. Oh, and it's off. An offensive rebound by the Berries, and they're going to get some free throws, so a great job breaking the press that time. There were two Lady Berries yeah. ahead of everybody else. And they're going to run a out-of-bounds play underneath. Olivia Pearson taking it out. And Megan Ben checking back in the game for Yillian Rodriguez. Right, I'm, I'm going to say this to you before she yells at you like she did at me four or five years ago on the softball field. That's Jillian. Not Jillian. Jillian. Even though I spelled Yillian, it's Jillian. And she yelled at me when I was doing, <laughs> when I was doing the PA from, from Cherub. And Pearson from way downtown bank. And puts the berries on top five to three or five to zero. So Olivia Pearson with all five of the points so far. Logan's brought off to a great start offensively. Lewis Gass is as well. They've had a couple good sets, just haven't been able to put points on the board. And the Kings pull the trigger, but it's going to be rebounded this time by Olivia Pearson. And I believe it bounced off of the Kings. Yep. Or not. It looks like it's off of Olivia. Yep, good, good def defensive pressure that time for Lewis Gass to force the turnover. And once again, a nice pass by Martin inside. And once again, missed by Hummer, Kaus, and once again, this one's going to go off the Logan Sport. So Lewis Kaus still looking for the first points almost two minutes into the contest. But again, I think they've uh, looked pretty good in the half court. They just haven't been able to convert. Yeah, they have to go a stack. Throw it up top. A three by Minich. Let's it fly. It's going to be a long rebound. Try ends up with the rebound. Gives it to Ben. Ben across the 10-second line. She's going to try to take it herself to Pearson on the corner. Let's it fly from three. Long rebound to Ellie Deardorff. And she's getting trapped over on the wing, drives by the defense, loses the hammer. And Taylor Pasquale, a lot of contact on that one. Now Ellie Deardorff from the left corner. Once again, a long rebound, and it looks like this is going to be out of bounds. I believe off of Megan Ben, yep, so Lewis Gass will, uh, will get the ball back. So uh, the Kings, pretty good defensive possession there. Of course, and uh, Logan Sport settle for some long two. Logan Sport Berries are going to be a pretty second time out here. But a, a fast pace to the game, Joe. This one looks a, a lot different than the opener was tonight. And uh, Logan Sport had some really good shots on goal, not quite able to convert. And same thing, Lewis Cass with a lot of shots from down low, just nothing falling quite yet. Yeah, I think Coach Collins has got to be pleased, even though it's, you know, two and a half minutes in and they still haven't scored. They've looked pretty good offensively, at least on those first couple of possessions. I'm Rick House moving well without the basketball, getting some, some point blank looks at the goal. If they keep, keep keep getting those shots, they'll eventually fall. Their passing's been really good yes. so far, just not quite able to convert. So the Kings will take it way down on the Logan Sport end. And full court pressure for the first time we've seen from the Lady Berries. We'll see how the Kings react. And Logan Sport looks like they're in a 2 2 1 press. And uh, Pearson even denying. And, man, we're going to get a foul, I believe, on, on Lewis Cass, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks like the Kings, Lady Kings, not expecting that uh, that full court pressure. Good uh, adjustment by Coach Cooper in the timeout. Caught them off guard. And that's going to be a nice break for the Berries as they'll take the ball on their side. Out of bounds. Olivia Pearson taking the ball out of bounds as the Berries line up in a box. And now... I don't know uh, what's going on here. We got the officials on different pages. Uh, it certainly looked like the foul was on Lewis Cass. Yeah, the the, the, the uh, referee across the way thought that Cass would get the ball. Well, that would be we'd have a story here early in the first <laughs> quarter if the, the, they would get the ball after committing a foul. So Megan Ben will flash up top. They're going to get it to her. She back to Pearson. Looks like as, the Kings matching up out of this zone defense right now. Yeah, is this a a three-two? 
or one two two because yeah yeah because um maya martin's way out front top of above the three-point line defending so emily cry lets it fly and it's gonna roll oh just outside and martin comes out of the fray she's on the fast break looks up to hunter house and she's gonna finish for two well we said if hummer house keeps getting those looks eventually they'll start falling she's doing a great job moving without the basketball finally gets rewarded with a field goal so the Barry's on the fast break. Ellie Deerdorf trying to find the other sophomore, Emily Kripe, but just a little bit out of her reach and it's going to be out of bounds and Lewis Castball. Substitutions, Justine Brown, Jillian Rodriguez back into the uh, Logan Sport lineup. Ellie Deerdorf and Emily Kripe. We'll take a break as uh, we had a little water bottle malfunction, but uh, all's well that ends well. So the Lewis Cast Lady Kings break the full court pressure. Well, pretty quickly. And Logan Sport still quite a bit of pressure as they're in a man-to-man. -man. And the Kings let it fly from the corner. Going to be a three for Mallory Minnick for the Kings as Olivia Pearson breaks the pressure, drives to the basket. She'll kick it out to Ben, now to the corner to Rodriguez, and she'll score for two. That was a nice looking shot that time from Jillian Rodriguez, 12 foot, no hesitation at all on the baseline. And both teams continue to press. Martin breaks the pressure pretty easily, drives down the middle of the floor, kicks it, and she'll finish for two. Good, good play that time for the Lady Kings. Good to go. Minnick with a couple of points on her first field goal, tied at seven. And Rodriguez, she gets some pressure, loses the handle on it. Now it's going to be a jump ball, and it will go to the Kings. More substitutions for Coach Cooper. She's uh, keeping a lot of fresh bodies in there as Deardorf and Kriper back in for Pasquale and Ben. And we talked about the depth that Logan Sport has. Now, this could be part of that strategy of trying to wear Lewis Cass out and keep fresh bodies yep, for the Bears. No question about it, because you can see it from he's already uh, gasping for breath. Oh, it's, yeah. it's been a fast pace here in this first quarter. And Logan Sport really putting the pressure on. Nice shot over Rodriguez, and that's going to be two more for Minnick. Well, Minnick's got a nice-looking shot. A couple of field goals in a row, and the Lady Kings have the lead. And so the Berries will set up top. Livia Pearson sets the offense. Emily Krab, or Krab goes to the high elbow. Now Rodriguez. Rodriguez looks down, drives, kicks it to Krab, and it's going to be loose, and the King's going to pull it out of the fray. Good defense by Maya Martin. She's playing the top of that zone with those long arms, but she uh, rotated back into the paint to play, cut off that passing lane with a good steal. So the senior Hummer Kaus up top. Now she'll dish to Martin. Then a give and go. Hummer Kaus back with the ball. She drives. A little bit off the mark. Livia Pearson comes out with the ball, and it's going to be another jump ball, and this one will go to the Berries. Yeah, tough break that time for the Lady Kings. Hummer Kaus, a good move on the baseline, just was at a bad angle. Uh, couldn't use the glass, and uh, came up just a little bit long. Tough break for Lewis Cass. So the Kings continue to press with two players on the Logan Sport side. And Pasquale, she dishes over to Deerdorf as she picks up some pressure and passes ahead to Pasquale. Pasquale looks down to Emily Kripe once again. She's going to draw the foul and head to the line. I'm on Madeline Hoff, but uh, good work that time for Kripe. Good position on the low post. Uh, made herself available for, for the entry pass. And she's got a chance to get some points at the free throw line. So Emily Kripe, part of that impressive sophomore class. She lets her first shot fly, and it's good. Can you find Jamal Wilkes? She's a free throw. Yeah. Yeah. Jamal Wilkes, one of the best shooters in the history of the NBA. But very unorthodox shot, but I tell you, two for two. Oh, uh, nice. I, I'll shoot like that if, if they'll go in. And that will get that will tie the score, 9-9, nine, nine, with 3.29 to go in the first quarter. Over. Like you said, this is a good place. So, you know, Everybody's getting their money's worth tonight. That's now Mark sure. drives the left side. Nowhere to go, and it's, she's going to drag her pivot foot, and that's going to be a travel and give Logan Sport. Mark Fox, Mark King, Mark Berry, is now coming to the rescue of Jillian Rodriguez. On a couple of possessions ago, same thing this time. Uh, they needed to come to rescue one of their players. A turnover gives the ball back to the Berries. So another sophomore checks in for the Berries, uh, which will be Justine Brown. And Pasquale to the corner, reverses it to Deardorf, who reverses it to Pearson. Pearson lets it fly from three. A little bit off the mark, rebounded by Brown, and she's going to draw a foul. And that's, sometimes that's the risk you run when you play a zone defense. You don't have individual blockout responsibilities. Nobody blocked out Justine Brown yep. that time. Good hustle by her. Uh, to get that to, to get that offensive rebound. Uh, once again, Pearson will take the ball out of bounds, and Justine Brown flashes to the ball. Now she'll go to Taylor for Squally on the other side. She'll kick it down to Megan Ben. And Ben, she tries to let it fly, but is the crowd what a foul on that one. I think Maya Martin got, a, got an awful lot of the ball. There might have been yeah. a little bit of the arm, but she got an awful lot of the ball. I, I agree with the no call that time from the officials. Martin looks down. Low to Hoff. Hoff lets it fly. Rebounded by Martin. Back up to Hoff. 
Now to the corner, over to Minnick. Minnick lets it fly. Long once again, Megan Ben blocking out. And it looks like they're going to call the over-the-back foul on the Kings. If that's on Madeline Hoff, that'll be her second personal foul. And we already talked about, Steve, you, or especially you talked about the, uh, about the lack of depth that the Lady Kings have. Uh, yeah. that, uh, that's gonna, that could be huge. With yeah. uh, Hoff already with two personal fouls, still two and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. The Kings are going to try to roll the dice here. But she's really going to have to be careful to not pick up that third foul already with only 2.30 to go in the first quarter. And now a drive by Pasquale going to her left, and she's going to draw the foul. And that is a third foul on Hall. And she was in good position, Steve. She, she had uh, slowed that foot and got in the way, and uh, that's going to force oh, wow. a substitution for Lewis Cass. Paxton Hicks, I believe, uh, is at the scorer's table. So the first one is good for Taylor Pasquale. There's this real tough break for the Kings. Like I said, Hoff, or yeah, she was in good position if she had just uh, remained stationary. And that is going to be number 31 for the Kings. Off of the JV, looks like uh, Paxton Hicks, like you said. And makes both free throws to the Lady Berries on a 4 0 run. Up now 11 9. Quickly back, though, with the Lady Kings, and Minnick knocks it down from the baseline. Nice, Minnick. nice shot by Minnick. Yeah, that's her third field goal, I believe. She's looked good here in the first uh, quarter for the Lady Kings. We are tied at 11. Lewis Cass is giving Logansport all they want here in the early going. And Deerdorf up top. Kripe flashes across the middle. They're going to go to Kripe. She'll let it fly. A little bit off the mark. And Megan Ben tries to save it. But it looks like it's going to be King's ball. Now, the Lewis Cass Lady Kings may have played the toughest schedule in the state of Indiana. So this team only has one win, at least based on what we've seen these first six minutes. They are outstanding here so far. Yeah, I agree with that. And going to be a travel up top on Megan Deshaun. And, of course, as soon as I say how good the Lady Kings are, they, they turn the ball over in a second. So uh, I've known Megan Deshaun for a long time on, from the softball field. So uh, she's looking out for me. I appreciate that. And Jillian Rodriguez back in for the Berries as Olivia Pearson will get a much-deserved break. 11 to 11 with 155 to go in the first quarter. Ellie Deerdorf slowly brings the ball to the floor to Taylor Pasquale on the wing. She'll dribble around, pass to Deerdorf once again. Deerdorf sticks it out. Ball stolen away Good from hands. Martin, and they're going to call it jump ball. It will be the Kings ball. Well, Maya Martin is causing havoc on that yeah. uh, zone defense for Lewis Cass at the top of that 1-2-2 uh, uh, two, two zone defense with those long arms. Uh, she anticipates well and uh, creates another turnover for the Lewis Cass Kings. Yeah, the junior, Maya Martin, with an impressive start to the game tonight, and the Berries continue to pressure. It'll be back to... Martin as she drives down. Now she'll go up top and lets it fly from three. Oh, man, a big shot by Megan, Megan Deshaun. No hesitation at all for Megan Deshaun. Like you said, she let it fly, and the Lady Kings with a three-point lead. So it'll be down with Olivia Pearson back in the game. She kicks it out to Rodriguez to Pasquale for three, and it's good. No hesitation again from Pasquale. She got an open look and drilled it. So four for Pasquale. We are tied at 14. This has been a lot of fun here in this first quarter. Both teams going back and forth, taking each other's best shot here in the early going. So Deshaun dishes over to Martin, and she'll pass it across to Minnick, who will drive just off the mark. Levia Pearson comes out with the rebound, but then she's double-teamed, going to force a jump ball, and it'll go to the Berries. And again, Maya Martin with that, uh, that great reach and great anticipation on the defensive end, uh, creating the help ball situation. So the Kings will, or the Berries will take it out. Livia Pearson into Ellie Deerdorf. And she beats the pressure pretty easily. Looks ahead to Pasquale. Pasquale looks inside to Kripe. Kripe lowers her head. Nice drop step just off the mark. And it's going to be rebounded by the Kings. But Rodriguez forces the jump ball. Actually, I think they're going to get a foul on Jillian Rodriguez, oh, I think. Yep. Yeah, I'm with you, Steve. I thought it was going to be a hell ball situation. <laughs> Coach Cooper was thinking the same thing you were, that it should have been a held ball, but unfortunately for the Lady Berries, the call goes against him. So the Kings throw it up ahead. Heimer Kaus beats the press. She's driving all the way to the basket, out of control, and it's going to be a charge on Heimer Kaus. Or they, no, or maybe they, not. They called the block on Olivia Pearson, I oh, think. Man. I thought she was making the charge signal. Yep, she I guess was. not. Yep, she, she, she called block. I, yeah, I'm with you, Steve. It looked like uh, Olivia Pearson was set. Um, Man, but. that's going to be two on Pearson here with 39 seconds to go in the first quarter. And Hunter Kaus lets it fly for the first one. It's going to be good. So Libby's going to have to come out with those uh, two personal fouls at least for the rest of this uh, quarter. 
So just we'll see how long they can go with her on the bench. She's a, a valuable member of this Lady Bear basketball team. Justine Brown back in the game. Hammer Kaus eyes her second free throw. She'll let it fly, and it is good. A good looking rotation on that free throw from Hummer House. She's been impressive here in this first quarter for Lewis Gass. Four points on the game for her as Ellie Deerdorf drives down on that left side. She'll dish to Kripe under the basket. And a nice finish for Kripe. Kripe's done a great job of getting great position on that low block and making good. herself available for the pass. Good hands there by Ellie Deerdorf, knocking the ball out of bounds as the Kings will take it out once again as the Berries bring four players onto this side of the court. Rodriguez all over Hummer House. And she crosses the 10 second line. See if Lewis Cass tries to hold for the last shot of this quarter. 18 seconds to play. Certainly that's uh, what Coach Collins, I think, is wanting them to do. Oh, nice steal by Pasquale as she flies down the court. She's trying to go all the way. And some contact, no foul called. Rebounded by Hicks. And the Kings, two seconds to go. Didn't quite notice it. They launch a three-quarter length shot. And at the end of the first quarter, the score is tied at 16. This is the Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Invitational on 1230 WSAL. This just in, Logan Sports Savings Bank leads the way in local lending. You heard it right. We're leading the way and we're ready to lend to you. Rates are low and the time is right. Now's the time to remodel. Whether it's the kitchen, bathroom, windows, carpet, roof, or a new addition like a deck, garage, or the new room you've always dreamed of, we're here for you. Go ahead and pick up the phone and call 722-3855. Stop in and see us, your local friends, Rex and Dee, Dee or visit us on the web at www.logansportsavings.com. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Tourney continues with the boys basketball teams on Friday, December 22nd. Pioneer will play Logan Sport and Caston will play Lewis Cass. The consolation and championship games will be played on Saturday, December 23rd at the Berry Bowl in Logan Sport. The fun and excitement continues with this old fashioned rivalry of county schools playing for the Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Tourney Championship Trophy. Logan Sports Savings Bank leading the way. So this is Steve Isaacs. I'm joined by Joe Stetson. We are at the Berry Bowl at Logan Sport High School where the score is tied after one 16 to 16 between the Lewis Cass Kings and the Logan Sport Lady Berries as Lewis Cass will take the ball out of bounds. And Looks like full court pressure once again uh, by the Berries, we'll see if the Kings, they didn't handle it the last time, Logan Sports sprung it on them, but so far, uh, they handled it much better this time as Deshaun gets the inbounds pass. Guarded by Ellie Deardorf, she'll dish it to the left. Hummer Kaus lets it fly off the mark. Justine Brown with the rebound, dishes it to Deardorf. She'll look ahead to Ben. Ben with a nice step back, she'll look inside to Cry, and it's going to be a jump ball after the Kings double teamed her and uh, forced a jump ball. Good uh, unselfishness that time for Megan Ben, but she was wide open for about 12 feet. Uh, should have pulled the trigger on that one. Straight passed into a triple team. Fortunately, the Berries have the arrow. The Berries will stack it up. Ellie Dierdorf takes it out. Looks to Megan Ben on that left side. She'll reverse the ball to Pasquale. And back to Dierdorf in the corner. She'll let it fly for three. Just off the mark. She gets her own rebound. Takes it back up top. Looks to Pasquale. She'll let it fly for three. And it's good. Well, that's a good looking jump shooter right there. Pasquale from the identical spot. That was our first made three point field goal. Right on the mark. And so the Berries with some light pressure. Megan Ben will pick her up at half court. Goes through the screen. Hummer Kaus looks down low. It's going to be a block by Pasquale. And it's going to roll out of bounds. Looks like it's off Logan Sport. Yes, it's going to be Lewis Kaus' ball. Yep, just off the fingertips of Ellie Deardorf. A great defense that time from Taylor Pasquale blocking that shot from behind. But the, the pace has been frenetic here in this first uh, quarter plus here at the Berry Bowl. So it's off top to Minnick. She drives. Nice shot from the elbow, off the mark, rebounded by Hicks. Hicks throws it up, rebounded by Kripe, and it's going to be another jump ball. So I think these uh, two teams uh, heard us talking. They wanted to have uh, an IHSA record for the most points, in, or most uh, held ball in a quarter. So so underneath, it'll go back up top to Hemmerkow. She's going to drive to her right. Pretty good defense by Ben, but then she reaches in for the foul. Yeah, anytime you reach in, coach, you know that. That's uh, almost more times than not. Even if there's no contact, you're gonna you're not gonna get the benefit of the foul from the officials. So once again, Lewis Castle set up in a box formation, and it's gonna be oh, thank you, Mr. Stetz. And from the corner, 
just off the mark. Hicks almost with the rebound. Then it goes over to Deerdorf, and Deerdorf's going to draw a foul. And Lewis Cass just continues to mount the fouls. I think that's going to be the eighth on the Kings, and that will send Logan Sport to the free throw line. Yep, like we said before, anytime you reach in, you're going to get the call more often than not. Maya Martin uh, with the reach, uh, committed the foul, uh, sending Allie Deerdorf to the free throw line. And Martin, who's had a pretty impressive uh, first half here for the Kings. Oh, yeah. Commits her first foul. Illy Deardorff puts the first one fly, and that one is good. Deardorff, I believe her first points of the game. I think you're right. Jillian Rodriguez in for Emily Kreff gets a round of applause from, from her bench and her coaches. She uh, did some good work out there for the for the Lady Berries. So Deardorff lets it fly. Just off the mark, going to be rebounded by the Kings to Sean as the Berries pull that pressure back to half court. And Hunter Kaus, the pass to the right, over to Martin. Martin drives. She'll look to Hicks in the corner. Hicks looks down, reverses the ball to Hunter Kaus, drives to her left, down the middle of the lane. She lets it fly, gets her own rebound, and it's in for two. Well, Hunter Kaus has been very active here in this first half of the Lady Kings, their first points of the quarter. So Deardorff drives down all the way to the right corner, looks down at Brown, reverses the ball up to Pearson on the wing, and she'll look over to Pasquale, reset the offense. And now two berries in that high post, Brown and Pearson. Deardorff goes across the top of the key. Now she'll go back to Pearson at the top of the key. Back to Deardorff, fires from the wing, just off the mark. Brown with the rebound, and she's going to draw the foul to put back. And Justine Brown has been outstanding for the Lady Berries tonight off the offensive glass. That's at least her third offensive rebound in limited minutes so far tonight. And great job by the, the three sophomores, Cripe. Brown and Deardorff making a big impact early in this game. 6.04 to go in the second quarter. Berries up 20-18 to 18 on the Kings. And Brown just off the mark with her first free throw. We've got uh, Madison Rodebaugh in the lineup for Lewis Cast. Uh, so her first uh, appearance in for Megan Deshaun. So, yeah, you talked about it at the top, Steve. Uh, not a lot of depth on this Lady Kings uh, ball club. Now we're going to get some more substitutions. This is uh, Kyla Menon, a freshman, in for the Lady Kings. So the second one is good for Brown. And you wonder if this is, uh, is for fatigue as much as anything for Coach Collins, just to try and give his uh, key players just a couple minutes of rest before they can get back out there. Yeah, we wonder if that would factor into this, and it is really Hammerkaus crosses the 10 second line, and she, nice screen for her. She looks over to the right, and it's going to be back to Hammerkaus. She's going to dribble back up to the top of the key. And Rhoda Ball flashes to the corner, but it goes off her over her fingertips. And just off her reach, and, and this Logan Sport defense continues to be pretty tight. And they're going to get now loose cast. They're still pressing two players in the backcourt. And Deardorff handling the pressure pretty well. <coughs> goes behind her back, crosses the 10 second line, looks up to Pearson. Pearson looks down at Brown. A skip pass over to Pasquale. Pasquale drags her pivot foot and the travel. Yep, good uh, recovery that time by Lewis Cass defense. They saw her hit two three-pointers from that identical spot, so they rushed out at her, and like you said, she slid that pivot foot and resulted in the turnover. So the Kings with just two points here so far in the second quarter, but still only down three. Yeah, yeah. They're still playing awfully hard. And once again, down to Hummerkaus. She gets the ball, lets it fly. Rebound by Hicks on the other side. A lot of contact down low. And Martin lets it fly in. She will draw the foul. Yeah, great work on the offensive glass that time for the Lewis Cass Lady Kings. Some good work from, from the bench players. Hicks and Rotoball in particular just into the lineup. So that will be two shots for Martin. And, and that, that uh, third foul, I believe. Off, just off the mark, Mark with two points here in the first half, and a couple subs for the Berries. Rodriguez goes out as well as Brown. Looks like Ben and Cripe back into the game. So Coach Cooper, they definitely have a, a, an advantage in depth, and she's yeah. taking that to full advantage, of rotating constantly, bringing fresh people in. I think it's a really smart move in the second Absolutely. free throw is good. That's three for Martin as Deardor crosses the 10 second line, and Lewis Cass has pulled the pressure off. Now they're in a 3-2 zone. Pass over to Pasquale, back to Deardorff. Megan Ben wide open on the left side, right around the defense. Let's it fly. It's going to be rebounded by Rodeball. Great steal, though, by Olivia Pearson. Anticipated that. The Berries get it back. To Ben, back to Pearson in the corner. She lets it fly for three for Olivia Pearson. We're going to timeout, Coach. Coach Collins didn't like what he saw. 
They did a great job defensively, finished the possession with a great defensive rebound, and then a careless turnover leads to a wide-open three-point shot from Olivia Pearson uh, playing with those two fouls. Uh, Coach uh, Cooper showing a lot of trust in her senior, uh, putting her back out there with two personal fouls. And she now has a game-high eight points for the Berries. And it's a uh, Pearson player that we've got to watch. I believe she's been playing varsity since her either freshman or sophomore year. I think really freshman done, year. Yep. Yeah, really done a dynamite job. And uh, her little brother has been getting minutes for the uh, Logan Sport JV, Malachi Pearson, really doing a fine job uh, for that squad. Yep, I, uh, I've coached against uh, Olivia's dad uh, in softball for many, many years, so I've, I've known the family for a long time. Uh, a true sports family, and, and not just basketball, but uh, all the sports. And very fine people. So with uh, 4.45 to go here in the second quarter, Logan Sport on top of Lewis Cass 24 to 19. You mentioned Lewis Cass's record just one and eight on the season. I tell you, Joe, if they continue to play like this the rest of the year, that record's going to be looking a lot better. Yeah, they won't finish the season with one win if they play at all, like they played in the uh, first 12 minutes here tonight. Give them the berries all they want, hanging tough. Uh, they're struggling a little bit offensively here in this quarter with just three points so far in the quarter. And we'll see what Coach Collins can uh, drop in the timeout. Uh, and continue with some of the bench players out there. Just wonder if his starters are just a little bit too gassed with this frenetic pace that we've had in the first quarter and a half. Yeah, and a, and a smart move by Logan Sport to really push the tempo. And uh, that's already factoring here early in the second quarter. So Lewis Cass will take it. Logan Sport pulls the pressure off. Looks like they're now in a 3-2 zone. As Hummerkaus dishes it, Ben goes for the steal. Back to Hummerkaus. She lets it fly in. A nice two-hand floater. Yeah, with the, with, the, with the opposite hand that time. Nicely done by Hummerkaus. Good good call called up by Coach Collins in the timeout. So Ben, real quick on the other end. She lets it fly, and she hits the two. So a couple of baskets in real quick order. Logan Sport back up by five. So Martin dishes it to Ben, and now up top, Hicks lets it fly from the free throw line, and Deardorff comes out. Ball almost stripped away. Deardorf gets past her, looks ahead to Pasquale. Pasquale shot fakes, and they're going to say she drug her pivot foot. At the turnover, it will be Lewis Cass' ball. Now, I, I agreed with the first uh, travel. I didn't see that one, but uh, it was all the way across to the opposite way, and the official standing right there. Uh, no argument from Coach Cooper, so it must have been a good call, but it was a very subtle move for that pivot foot. So once again, Logan Sport bringing a little bit of pressure. Then on Hammerkow, she crossed the 10 second line all the way to the basket, and she lets it fly, almost puts in the two, and draws some harm. Now Hammerkow, uh, we've seen her shoot free throws with the left hand, but now we've seen her finish at the goal the last couple possessions with the right hand, and she threw that uh, half-court shot at the end of the first quarter uh, with her right hand. So uh, a little amber and dexterous, but an uh, impressive-looking ball player, this yeah. Hammerkow. So she'll let her first free throw fly, and just a little bit off the mark. Oh, she's got too, too much, uh, too good of a technique to be struggling. To, I believe just two out of five uh, from the free throw line uh, tonight for the Lady Kings. She will get one more, and this one's also off the back rim. And Emily Kripe does a good job cleaning up the defensive glass for the Lady Berries. So Deardorff looks ahead to Pasquale. Pasquale drives just off the mark, rebound on the weak side by Olivia Pearson, and it's just off the mark. A lot of contact down low. I think going to get Pasquale over the back. Good, good box out position that time from Paxton Hicks. And a tough break for the Lady Berries as Olivia Pearson uh, switched hands, went to the left hand to try and finish. Uh, looked like it was going to go and just rimmed out. And Hicks, just a, a freshman for Lewis Cass. Her dad, Dave Hicks, who I watched play years ago for the Kings. And there's a there's a lot of youth on this uh, Lewis Cass yeah, uh, uh, squad. No sophomores at all on the varsity or JV roster. Bunch so, of freshmen and some a couple juniors and a couple seniors. So Hicks with the air ball, going to be Logan Sport ball with 3.45 to go in the second quarter. Ellie Deardorff across the 10th second line, over to Pasquale on the wing, back to Deardorff. Deardorff looks down low, over to Pearson. Cry flashes to the high post, drives, lets it fly, block, and Ben strips it away and tries to pass it to Deardorff, going to be knocked out of bounds by Martin. And the Berries will retrieve the ball. And great block by Hummerick House, but it went right to Megan Ben. But then, again, Maya Martin doing a great job defensively playing those passing lanes. A, a very smart ball player, very good defensive player for the Lady Kings. And the Berries continue the the uh, carousel substitutions, trying to keep fresh bodies in there. Rodriguez now in the game for Megan Ben. Deardorff up top over to Pasquale. Back to Deardorff. Back to Pasquale. She'll let it fly from three, just off the mark. Once again, rebounded by Menon. Now the Kings look ahead to Hummerkaus. She'll cross the line. Go, dribbles to her right, back to her left. 
Now to the corner. Going to be a drive by Menon. She'll let it fly. And it's good. The bank is open at the Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Tournament. I'm not sure if she called bank, but it's an impressive finish. So Pearson over to Deardorff. She'll let it fly for three. Just off the front of rim. Long rebound to Mark. She's on a fast break. Libby Pearson, only player in her way. She dishes over to Rotoball. And we're going to have a charge, I believe, on Maya Martin. And it looks like Olivia Pearson drawing the charge. Olivia Pearson actually is number two in all of Indiana in taking charges, averaging one uh, per game. So pretty impressive by Olivia Pearson. Yeah, the Lewis Gas fans didn't like that. Olivia was awfully close to being underneath the basket. A lot of times that's a play on, but uh, perhaps uh, after they blew the first call against Olivia, they, they um, can you say makeup call? <laughs> For the second foul against Martin and uh, Justine Brown lets it fly from the free throw line and it's good. And it clanged off the back room, went straight in the air again, floating down brilliantly into the net. Nice, nice bucket that time for Brown. So that's three for Brown. Now Brown on the defensive end, arms up, forces a missed shot. Ben on the fast break, she looks up ahead. She's going to pull it out up top to Brown, reverse to Deerdorf. She drives to her left. Now to her right, takes it back up top, going to reset the offense. And she'll go behind her back. Now to Brown in the high post, back to Deardorff. She lets it fly for three. It's good. That's, I believe, her first field goal of the night. Now, she was just a hair short on that last one, but uh, we are in perfect view that time right behind her. A nice finish. So four points for Deardorff. The Kings come up quickly. Back inside to Hicks, off the mark, rebound by Rotoball. She lets it fly, air ball. Now a rebound by Menon, and it's good. That's four points for Menon. Well, I tell you, this, she has been very impressive. And now Deardorff runs it up once again. Pasquale lets it fly for three, and Pasquale on fire from three-point range. That's the identical spot that she's made her first two. That's uh, definitely a spot they got to try to get her off that show, off that line. And Coach Collins seeing the same thing that we did. Uh, as well as the, the Lewis Cass Lady Kings have played here in this first half, Steve. Uh, starting to get away ever so slightly. A nine-point game with a minute 20 to go. Uh, we definitely like to get this back to five or six by halftime. And a smart timeout, like you said, by Coach Mike Collins as the Berries really got the momentum going. And you know Lewis Cass, really the endurance at this point has got to be getting to him. They've been able to get these JV girls in. They've been doing a pretty good job. Oh, they sure just have. Not quite able to keep up with the scoring. Logan Sport continues to push the pace, and uh, I think their confidence is getting going too with yep. the shooting. Yep. No question about it. The, the good news, though, for the Lady Kings with those the starters on the on the bench getting some rest. Hopefully, they'll have uh, some some uh, gas in the tank uh, in the second half. Uh, but uh, this is a critical 81 seconds, I think, for for Lewis Cass. Uh, they can't afford to let this game get any any further away from them, especially uh, that would be a, a huge uh, demoralizing factor as well as they played in this first half if they go in down double digits. Yeah, it really would. And sometimes just just that full timeout gives you just enough time to kind of catch your breath, kind of get your bearings. And uh, we'll see if it affects this explosive Logan Sport offense as they really start to catch their stride with 1.21 to go in the half. Logan Sport on top of Lewis Cass, 34 to 25. No changes uh, with the lineup for Coach Collins. He's sticking with the, uh, those bench players who, uh, like you said, have given them some solid minutes yeah. here in the second quarter. So Logan Sport going to pick up Lewis Cass in a full-court man-to-man defense as they are finally able to get the ball in, but it's going to be stolen by Brown over to Rodriguez. Rodriguez drives, throws it to Pearson in the corner, and she looks down to Rodriguez on the give-and-go and a nice little reverse layup. She's going to draw the foul, and Rodriguez will go to the line. Let's see who that foul foul on Maya Martin. And that's their third. That's that's a big whistle uh, with still 70 seconds to play. I know Coach Collins, uh, this is a tough decision for him. For the time being, he's going to leave her out there. I, I agree with it. They uh, really can't afford to let this game get too much further away from the Lady Kings. Yeah, Martin has had a really good first half. Her third foul, so the Kings hoping they can keep her out of any more foul trouble here in this first half. It's the, the free throw good by Rodriguez, so it's a double-digit lead for the first time tonight for the Berries. So Rodriguez lets her second go, and it's going to be good. Four points now for Rodriguez as as Brown picks Martin up after the 10-second line. She drives to her left, dishes it to Menon, and a steal by Brown up to Pasquale on the fast break. Pasquale throws it up just off the mark. Deardorff grabs it, and it's going to be Hicks, the freshman, Pulling out the rebound, 50 seconds to go in the clock. Martin on the fast break, 
looking up ahead. She's going to pass it to Menon. Menon once again lets it fly, and that's six points now for Menon. Kyla Menon's coming out party. How about that with six points here in the first half? Nerd, the Lady Kings be without her. And Polly Pasquale from way downtown bang her 13th point of the game. Coach Collins, who knows, they've identified her as a shooter, but unfortunately, she has gotten lost here the last couple of possessions for the Lewis Cass. Hummer Kaus off the mark, drive with the rebound, pulls it out. Here to 16 seconds to go, up to Pasquale on the fast break, and she's going to score again. Starting to get away from the Lady Kings. 14-point game, 10 seconds to go in the half. So Hummer Kaus with five seconds to go, now three, lets it fly. She's going to draw the foul, and she'll go the line. A good decision that time from Hummer Kaus. Uh, just take put matter, take matters in her own hands to go strong to the goal and draws the foul. Now she's got a, these are two huge free throws for Lewis Cass to try to cut into this 14 point deficit. Uh, it was just a couple seconds here before halftime. Yeah, really crucial to not let this deficit get any bigger going into the half. That's going to be off the mark. And Pearson going to sub back in for Logan Sport. She's in for Jillian Rodriguez, who's given some great minutes here in the first half. Now Pearson with two fouls, so she absolutely cannot pick up this third foul in the final 2.3 seconds of this half. I'm sure Coach Cooper uh, trusts, trusts her senior not to pick up that foul. So Coach Cooper going offense for defense. Now Pearson in the game, two seconds to go. She's going to let it fly from three-quarter court, and it is over the entire backboard, but a good effort there. And that will send us to halftime as the Logan Sport Berries on top of the Lady Kings, 41 to 28. This is the Logan Sports Savings Bank, Cass County Invitational on 94.9 and 1230 AM WSAL. Logan Sports Savings Bank, we're leading the way. Sometimes forecasting the weather can be a little tricky. Predictions can't always be precise, but there's one forecast you can depend on to be 100% correct 100% of the time. It's your banking climate at Logan Sport Savings Bank. Hello, this is Sandy, and I invite you to visit me and the rest of our staff at Logan Sport Savings Bank. We are always warm and friendly, ensuring great customer service. Our staff encourages you to go green with free e-statements, free internet banking, and free bill pay. Make those great days of paying your bills and balancing your checkbook bright and sunny by saving time and money, giving you a warm sense of security and peace of mind. That's the long-term forecast at 723 East Broadway and on the web at www.logansportsavings.com. Member FDIC. Logan Sports Savings Bank, we're leading the way. The championship game of the Logan Sport Savings Bank, Cass County Invitational between the Lewis Cass Lady Kings and the Logan Sport Lady Berries. As uh, we have a halftime show here, some uh, Santa and snow related. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure. I'm, uh, it's a uh, festive little uh, Christmas skit by some young ladies. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not much into show tunes, so I, I defer to your expertise, partner. I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on, but uh, the young ladies are having a lot of fun, and the, and the people that are here are enjoying it as well. Good show. And uh, it's about as much fun as the Logansport Berries fans are having as the Berries with a pretty impressive first half as they've got the 41-28 lead over Lewis Cass and what's been a pretty quick-paced game and been Very entertaining. So. Lewis Cass really has kept it pretty close until the last couple minutes there where Logan Sports pulled away. But uh, the Kings definitely still in this game, Joe. Yeah, no question about it. Tied at 16 at the end of one. Uh, they struggled a little bit to, to score uh, in the early stages of that second quarter, but they were still close, and all of a sudden Taylor Pasquale just uh, heated up from outside. Uh, Coach Collins, uh, you can see after that last uh, three-pointer that she made, uh, he was uh, a little upset with his defense because they've identified her as a great shooter. Uh, they know that she can knock the shot down, but uh, she got lost in that defense a couple of times, and it's a 13-point game. Uh, foul trouble, I think, hurt Lewis Cass a little bit. They had to go to the bench, um, and that not a lot of depth bringing some freshmen out there, but uh, they've held their own. Uh, Lewis Cass, all things considered, not in – bad shape obviously they would be like, like to be a lot closer uh, but but just a 13 point deficit still with the half to play yeah and, and Pasquale kept, caught fire there three three pointers 15 points on the half uh, also Olivia Pearson with eight points Megan Ben with two Ellie Deerdorf with four 
Jillian Rodriguez four, Justine Brown three, and Emily Cry four for the Logan Sport Lady Berries. On the Lewis Cast side, Mallory Minnick with seven points, Megan Deshawn with three, uh, Mia Martin with three points, Abra uh, Hummerkhouse with with eight. Uh, also, uh, men and six points for the Berries off the bench, who really came in there and did an impressive job with uh, three quick buckets there in that second quarter. And when we weren't sure she was going to get in, but this uh, bench coming in and really helping out Lewis Cass. Yeah, I think if you had asked Coach Collins at the at the start of the game, I'll tell you what, Coach, we're going to be at halftime. Kyla Menon is going to have more points than Ellie Deardorf. Uh, he said, "I'll take it." Yeah, yeah that, that has happened tonight, but uh, unfortunately. Uh, for the Lady Kings, uh, Taylor Pasquale, as you said, uh, lighting it up. Olivia Pearson doing a great job. But, uh, boy, I can't say enough good things about Kyla Menon, uh, a freshman. Uh, we have not seen her play, obviously, before, before tonight. But I'd have to assume this um, might be a career high, if, if not already, just in, in one half of basketball. She was uh, fearless out there, showed uh, a lot of confidence for a freshman. Yeah, you got to be impressed with uh, what Lewis Cass has coming up for sure. And uh, I really like the game plan by Coach Cooper there in the first half, rotating her players uh, in and out, trying to take advantage of Logan Sports' depth. And they really ran them to death. Uh, you know, that full court pressure most of the half and then really pushing the ball in the fast break. Ellie Deardorf doing a fantastic job running the point, pushing the ball up the floor and finding girls open and getting to that free throw line. Yep, and just looking at the rosters from the first game and this game, uh, just, uh, just I'm impressed with the – with the youth, uh, Lewis Cass was just three seniors. Logan Smart with just two seniors. We talked about Cass was only two seniors. Uh, Pioneer was just a couple seniors as well. So there's a lot of a lot of youth uh, on our four county schools. This uh, this tournament could be a lot of. I mean, it's been a lot of fun this year. It could be a lot a lot more fun next year with all the, with all the youth going on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, been looking at that Logan Sport sophomore class for quite a while, and they're they're really coming along at this point. So, uh, you know, good days ahead for both of these teams for sure. Uh, also, good days ahead for the Michigan State Spartans as they had a, a really nice win against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish this week, Joe. Uh, what did you think of your Spartans in that uh, big nationally televised game? Well, they, they came out on fire, uh, jumped out to a 31-11 lead uh, against Notre Dame, a very good uh, Notre Dame Fighting Irish team that was undefeated coming in, the winners of the, of the Maui Invitational. Uh, if, if, if Sparty can defend and, and rebound like that, they got a chance to beat anybody. Uh, uh, Joshua Langford really uh, starting to come to his own uh, as a sophomore, as is Cassius Winston. So um, Miles Bridges was was not the star of the show. Uh, it was a, a total team effort. Uh, they've got a, a game tomorrow against Nebraska. As the, for some reason, the Big Ten decides they're going to have the tournament a week ahead of time in Madison Square Garden. What, huh. what, nothing against the world's most famous arena. I get that, but uh, I just I don't understand that. But again, they really don't care what I think. But uh, State has a chance to be pretty good. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the loss to Duke, I was not surprised they lost. I was surprised that they gave up so many offensive rebounds. I was not expecting that. That's been a staple of, of Coach Izzo and his program is, is rebounding. Uh, Duke, with that very tall, athletic uh, front line, uh, just destroyed the Spartans on, on the glass. Uh, that's what surprised me. Um, I, I, I know they would love to get another chance to, to beat them, to play them again come March. But, uh, yeah, a great week for the Spartans. Uh, beating North Carolina on Sunday night and then beating Notre Dame. So you beat two top ten teams in a week, that's that's pretty good week's worth of work. Yeah, it really is. Uh, you know, Michigan State looks like the decisive favorite to win the Big Ten. Uh, you wonder if maybe, you know, Purdue is able to do that. Uh, Michigan looks decent. Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota, of course, looks really good. You know, Despite what do you that think? that home loss to Miami, that was – but but Miami's a pretty solid ball club. Too. Can't take anybody chance to, to knock Michigan State off of that. And, oh, I mean, absolutely. That, Michigan We're, State looks like a national championship contender. Yeah, they do. But uh, Purdue, I, I still think Purdue's got a – is going to be heard from before the, before the season is over with. Uh, Minnesota, that, that barn at Williams Arena, it doesn't matter how bad Minnesota is, that's never an easy place to win. So, uh, in Wisconsin, uh, three and four, but I've heard that they play just a brutal uh, non-conference schedule, so that's uh, that's hurt them. Uh, but I, I would, I certainly don't think it's a, a, a going to be a cakewalk for Michigan State and IU. Uh, played Duke really well uh, at home earlier in the week. And and played really well early in the week, and then uh, just kind of surprised that they, they lost so decisively to Michigan today. Uh, uh, the Wolverines not a bad team, but North Carolina just dismantled Michigan earlier in the week. Maybe that's the worst time to play a team coming off a coming yeah, off a butt coming off a butt kicking like Michigan got earlier in the week in Chapel Hill. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what to think. You know, Indiana played really well against 
this week. You know, the, I'm sure that emotionally was a, a really big game for them. I love the way they played, and you just hope that they can continue to keep that going. I love the way Deron Davis played there in the second half, taking it to those five-star players. Of and, uh, you know, yeah, I would. I don't know. I think IU's got a pretty good chance of having a winning record this season. You know, just how high they can go, I, I'm not sure, but I feel a lot better about the rest of the season after that game on Wednesday night. All right, here at halftime, it is Logan Sport 41 and Lewis Cass 28. We'll step aside for one final break. When we return, we'll have our third quarter for you here on the Logan Sport Savings Bank, Cass County Invitational on the 1230 AM, 94.9 FM, WSAL. The Logan Sports Grandma, Savings Bank Cass County the... Tourney continues with the boys' basketball teams on Friday, December 22nd. Pioneer will play Logan Sport, and Caston will play Lewis Cass. The consolation and championship games will be played on Saturday, December 23rd at the Berry Bowl in Logan Sport. Fun and excitement continues with this old-fashioned rivalry of county schools playing for the Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Tourney Championship Trophy. Logan Sports Savings Bank leading the way. Selfie. I'm not taking a check selfie. I'm depositing my check with Logan Sports Savings Bank mobile app. This will save me a trip to the bank. How does that work? Since I already have internet banking, I just went out and downloaded the app logged in and then I wrote for mobile deposit and my name and take a picture of the front and back and submit it. That simple. I suppose you're going to say something like member FDIC and equal housing lender. Nope, you just did. Alongside Steve Isaac, Joe Stetz, back at the variable. The halftime festivities are over. Some of the crowd has thinned out, I guess. Yeah. They, they saw the halftime entertainment. That's all they wanted to see. So I think they knew that you were doing play-by-play -play here. <laughs> That's nice. They wanted to get in their car and be able to listen to you. Well, we'll be here till the end of the game. You can catch us here on 94.9 FM and 1230 AM WSAL's Logan Sport. With the ball up top, they're going to feed it inside to Olivia Pearson. And a nice little fake to her right goes to her left. Drop step, and she's going to score the two. And Madeline Hoff with those three personal fouls. Uh, did a good job not fouling, but Olivia Pearson knew that. And then she'd have an opportunity to, to convert. But a nice move uh, by Olivia Pearson. Now uh, Logan Sport with her largest lead of the night at 15, 43, 28. I know it's early in the third quarter, Steve, but this is a big possession for Lewis Cass. Uh, they've got to try and stay close. Yeah, they really need to stop the bleeding at this point. And they do with that shot by Mia Martin. Nice finish by Martin. That'll be five points for her on the night. Yeah. As Logan Sport pushes it up. And you got a turnover, so Pasquale Pat bounced it on the sideline. So good. Good sequence there for Lewis Cass. They'll make it one in and a defensive stop at the other. So Cass will take it. Megan Ben picks up Hummer Cass at three-quarter court. She's going to ride her all the way down past the 10-second line, really putting the pressure on, doing a really nice job of not reaching. She'll run into Justine Brown, who had her arms straight up, still able to finish the two for the Kings. Hummer Cass is fearless going to the basket, so four unanswered points for Lewis Cass to get back uh, just down 11. Nice dribble by Deerdorf around a trap, and she's going to score the two underneath. Good finish that time from Ellie Deerdorf. On a near steal by Olivia Pearson. Megan Deshaun able to save it, though, for the Lady Kings. Yeah, really nice job by Deshaun coming out with that ball still. She'll dribble up. She'll look down to the post, draws the double team, back out to Hemrick House, and Coach Collins wanted him to slow it down a little bit. Now a steal by Megan Ben. She's on the fast break with Deerdorf. She'll dish it to Deerdorf, and she'll finish the two. Good job that time from Megan Ben. It didn't take, didn't hurry or anything. Now another turnover for the Lewis Cass. And the Bears really looking to finish this game off here early in the second half. Pearson lets it fly, and it's going to be rebounded. Good job, Madeline Hoff. To, by Hoff, yeah. Who spent most of that first half on the bench with three personal fouls. Good to have her back in the lineup for the Lady Kings. So Martin draws the double team in the corner. She'll kick it back after Hemmerkaus. So she'll drive down on Ben all the way to the basket, loses the handle. It's going to be out of bounds, and Logan Sport ball. Hummerkaus uh, slammed the wall and, and, and upset with herself. She knew she had a good drive to the basket, good open look, but uh, just slipped through her fingertips. So Deerdorf picks up some full court pressure. She blows right by it, throws it up to Pasquale, back to Deerdorf as they set up the offense. Pearson goes down to the block along with Brown. They got to be cognizant Maya Martin at the top of that zone. <coughs> Martin flashed up to the high, or uh, Brown flashed up to the high post. 
but she ends up drawing a foul. So it's going to be on Martin. That's going to be her fourth foul here early in the second half. Wow. I, I, there might have been, I don't think it was foul on Martin. I think it might have been from, from the other side, but coach is going to wow. leave her out there for the time being. Pasquale wants to fly just front rim. Now to Pearson on the wing. She'll take a couple steps back. Go to Deardorf in the corner. She'll let it fly for three. That's good. 18-point lead now for the Lady Berries. I think Coach Collins has got to keep Martin out there. This game's starting to yep. get away from Lewis Cass, even though she has four. Totally agree. Ball goes to the corner to Deshaun. She'll let it fly for three. Going to be a long rebound to Brown. She looks up to Pasquale, who pushes it up the floor. She's going to her left all the way. The basket dishes it over to Rodriguez just out of her reach, and it's going to be out of bounds in the Kings ball. And I believe we're going to get a timeout called by Coach Collins. I, I think he's going to spend this time out if I had to hazard a guess. I'm talking to Maya Martin about how to how to play and stay yep. out there with, with four fouls. You can't take any chances. You, you can't reach. You can't slide your feet. Yep. You're just you're, you're a very important part of the ball club, especially your great defense. But you just we got your 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 presence is more important than, than a possession or two that you may give up a point on. And she has some pretty good length too, so yes. if she could just use her athleticism and her length, she can still make a big impact on defense without doing any reaching. And the Kings now down 18. Logansport really trying to put this game away. Lewis Cash just needs to stay poised. You know, they, they've they got to make those points up somehow, but at the same time, you don't want to dig any more of a deficit. So just need some good, positive possessions as you try to stop the bleeding. And I can see how Logan Sport put 92 points up against Pioneer early in the week. They've got some outstanding three-point shooters. Uh, Pasquale, Ellie Deardorff, of course, Olivia Pearson. Uh, they've got a, an awful lot of weapons offensively. Yeah. Uh, this is a team that can make some noise come March. Yeah, looking pretty impressive so far. And, uh, you know, regardless of how this game goes, you got to think it's good their momentum going forward as the season progresses. So we'll see what uh, Coach Collins came up with uh, in in that timeout. Maya Martin, with those four person fouls, remains in the lineup. But uh, she is critical to this team's uh, success. And if they're to have any chance to come back, she has to be out on the court. So Hummer Kaus up top. She dribbles to her left. To Martin, give it go. Nice back to Hummerkaus. She lets it fly. Going to be an air ball. Coach Collins won some uh, a foul call there. Justine but, Brown again in the right place at the right time. Yeah. She, her, she may not have eye popping statistics tonight, but she has made a, quite an impact. She seems to always be in the right place uh, tonight for the Lady Berries. Yeah, she's done an impressive job as Ellie Deardorff crosses the 10 second line over to Ben. Ben thinks about it. Three looks down to Brown. Feeds the post. Nice little jump hook by Brown. Doesn't quite connect. Hummerkaus up on the left side, drives it all the way to the basket. She's going to let it fly from the left side. Nice rebound by Pearson, had inside position, and that's going to force a jump ball, and it's going to go to the Kings. Yeah, Madeline Hoff, uh, like you said, good position that time from Olivia Pearson. Madeline Hoff uh, reached over the top. She didn't go over the back, so I'm glad the officials didn't call it because there was yeah. no contact there. But that would have been her fourth foul, and that would have been the second Lady King with four fouls, not even halfway through the third quarter. And Kreip will check in for the Berries. And Martin's able to get loose and score the two. Nice finish from Maya Martin, and that's why Coach Collins leaves her out that they cannot uh, afford to have her out of the lineup. So quick transition basket for Deardorff. She'll score down low on the other end for the Berries. And Coach Collins didn't like that defensive uh, transition, so Paxton Hicks is at the score table. She'll check into the next dead ball for Lewis Cass. So the Martin launches from just outside the paint, and another two for Martin. Well, she is a good-looking ball player, this Maya Martin. Yeah. I'm really impressed with her and Hummer House for Lewis Cass. So Deardorff dishes to the wing. She looks down to Kripe, who had a really nice cut. Good block that time from Hoff. Again, with those three fouls, playing good defense for Lewis Cass. Martin pushes it up, looks to the corner of Hummer House, who drives the baseline, lets it fly, and she's going to draw a foul from Emily Kripe. So Lewis Cass uh, looks a whole lot more energetic uh, after that time up from Coach Collins. Uh, still down 16. They've got a long way to go, but uh, they've been impressed here the last couple of possessions. That'll uh, be the first foul on Emily Kripe and the first foul on the Berries of the half. That comes uh, just a one-team foul apiece here, and we've played nearly four minutes of this third quarter, so the officials doing a great job of letting yeah. these uh, ball players play. And uh, just a, a fast-paced, fun game to watch if you like this type of basketball, which I love. No, this has been, this has been a blast. Uh, this, uh, we don't get a chance to do the, the girls' tournament very often, so this has been a blessing for us. So Hummer Cows connects on her first free throw. And it's going to be the freshman Hicks back in the game. For, for Mallory Minnick. He spent a lot of time on the bench in that uh, second quarter because Hicks uh, gave him some solid minutes off the bench. Yeah. 
So Hummer Castle, her second free throw. She lets it fly. And once again, going to be good for Hummer Castle. She's got 11 points on the game. She's got a nice rotation on that yeah. um, jump shot. Good follow through on, from the free throw line. Impressive ball player. So Libby Pearson flashes up to the wing. She'll get the ball from Ben. She's going to dribble up. Now give it to Deerdorf up top. Nice. And the Barry's going to run Pasquale off of a double screen or triple screen. Now Deerdorf on isolation on the left side. And just off the mark, but she's going to draw the foul and go to the line. And I think that's my Martin, and that is that is that wow. Is tough break for Drew Lewis Cass. It was it was a gamble from Coach Collins to keep her out there, but but you and I both agreed that she had to stay out there. She's too important for this ball club. But uh, just in the wrong place at the wrong time on these uh, two fouls here in this third quarter that she picked up. And her notes over with still 3.48 for yeah. the third quarter. I'd honestly done the same thing as Coach Collins. Oh, I've, absolutely. But, you know, a competitive player, sometimes it's just hard. It's just hard to not reach, especially when you're yeah. used to being aggressive. Deardorff made the first free throw and made them both. So, again, that's the situation. If Maya had just let her go, she'd have made the, she'd have made the layup, two yeah. points. She fouls her, makes two free throws, so uh, would not have lost any points in that the transaction. She still would have been out on the basketball court for him. So, Deshaun dribbles it all the way down to the left side. Now she's going to pass it up top to Minnick, and Minnick loses the ball to Deardorff. Deardorff on the fast break, and she gets her shot blocked by the freshman heads. That was a pretty good, clean play. Sure and was. It's going to be knocked out of bounds to be the Barry's ball. I tell you, Coach Collins, I'm not sure how much uh, playing time these freshmen have gotten so far uh, on the season, but yeah. you know, he, he may have found some a couple of good ball players there in this freshman class. They're earning some time for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. A nice pass down to Cry on the jump hook. Ball's blocked out of bounds. Hoff again with a good defensive play. Man, she's quite the defender. Yes, she is, especially with uh, three personal fouls, but uh, made some good, smart basketball plays here in this third quarter. So Deardorff to the right off the out-of-bounds play. She dribbles to the left, lets it fly from the elbow, just off of the mark. And off again with good defensive position. Uh, boxing out, getting the, getting the rebound as she's fouled it from behind, I believe, Megan Ben over the top. So I tell you this, Ellie Deardorff, I mean, for a long time, one of the hardest working kids I've ever met. I can't imagine how many shots she shot in this gym over at the junior high gym at Lincoln, but it's really paying dividends as she's making such a big contribution to the Berries as a sophomore. Yep, no question about it. 16-point Logan Sport lead. So Hummer Cows drives all the way down, lets it fly again. Going to be rebounded by Hoff and uh, going to draw another jump. All the officials are going to talk about it. And it looks like it's Logan Sport ball. Yep. I'll tell you, Madeline Hoff, uh, she got energized from all that time she spent on the bench in that first half. She said, I don't want to sit any more time on the <laughs> On the bench, Coach, put me in, as she has played really well in this third quarter for Lewis Cass. So Deardorff will jog it up. She goes to her left side, the run of Pasquale off the screen. Now they look down to Pearson in the post. She likes to fly with a jump hook. Going to be blocked. Paxton Hicks again with a good defensive play Man, for she's Lewis Cass. Game. She really has. And now it's up top with Deshaun as they set up their offense. Passes it to her left to Hammerkaus, drives down. And now a skip pass over to Minnick. Minnick with a step back, Pearson in her face. Minnick tries to let it fly, but it's going to catch nothing but air. Great defense that time from Olivia Pearson. Forced Minnick into a, into a bad shot. She was a little bit frustrated, but uh, Olivia did a great job. Cut her off, wouldn't let her drive, and then closed out on the jump shot. Great, great defense by Olivia Pearson. So Deardorff going to walk it up, and she'll look up ahead. And uh, Rodriguez jumps out to the wing, back to Deardorff. She'll reverse it to her left. Pasquale Pearson looking for a position down low, doing her work early, but it's going to be stripped away by Lewis Cass. Hicks comes up with the loose ball again, making some nice contributions off the bench for Lewis Cass. Man, she's going to really earn in the minutes oh, yeah. tonight. And now Deshaun drives to her left. She reverses court. Hicks with a high ball screen. And she lets it fly. A nice shot there wow. by Deshaun. The lefty Michonne with the right hand finish wow. at the goal. Impressive. And Pasquale lets it fly for three. And it's going to be good for Pasquale's fourth three of the game. You cannot give her an open look. She did not have a whole lot of room, but that's all she needs is just a slight opening. She's got a nice-looking jump shot. And Hummerkaus lets it fly again. This one's off the mark. Going to be rebounded by Pearson. She's on the fast break. And she's numbers. looking ahead to Rodriguez. And Rodriguez just off the mark. And a good rebound by Madeline Hoff. Continues to make a solid contribution Man. for Lewis Castle oh. in this third quarter. And an impressive game so far. Now a skip pass to Minnick. She'll let it fly for three. And once again, rebounded by Rodriguez. Now she's on the fast breaks. Look ahead to Deardorff. Oh, just off the mark. She gets her own rebound, throws it up again. 
And it's going to be rebounded by Minnick. Deardorff steals it, pass. throws it to Rodriguez, and Rodriguez with the two. Great work that time from Jillian Rodriguez and Ellie Deardorff to get an easy wow. basket for the Berries after some hard work underneath. So to Sean across the 10-second line, guarded by Deardorff, 53 seconds to go in this fast-paced third quarter where Logan Sport leads 59-40 to 40 over Lewis Cass. Now we're going to get an illegal screen by Paxton Hicks. So offensive foul goes against the Kings. Minnick will step out, replaced by Kyla Menon. So I'm surprised we haven't seen her earlier, as well as she played in that second quarter, yeah. especially with six points off that Lewis Cass bench. So Deardorff. It just, it just seems like Lewis Cass is a lot closer than 19 points. Yeah. Lewis was almost making it look effortless with this big lead. Great pass. Oh, man, what a set play. A nice pass from Deardorff down to Ben on the back cut. And that gives Ben just four points on the game, but she's had, played an incredible game for the Berries. And she has not full court pressure, but Lewis Gass breaks it. But they're down 21, so see if they can hold for the final shot of this quarter. Still 25 seconds to go. It's been a, a disastrous third quarter for Lewis Gass after a, a pretty good first quarter. Uh, Logansport really uh, starting to exert themselves here so in the late stages. And Hicks reverses it now. Deshaun lets it fly from the other side. That one's going to catch air again. But Pasquale, somehow, I think Pasquale has blocked it. Okay. okay. Hummerkow somehow pulled that rebound out, drives the lane, and draws the foul. And Olivia Pearson was in great defensive position the whole way, and at that last second, she reached in and, and dreaded the foul. And Coach Cooper knows it. Coach, <laughs> she's shaking her head a little bit. Olivia's pleading her case. Yeah, Olivia did a great job defensively. Uh, but that, that last second just reached in and Hummer cows back to the free throw line. She has uh, been there an awful lot tonight. Yes, she has. She's been very aggressive taking it to the goal. And Hummer cows 11 points on the game. Make that 12. And Olivia Pearson now with three fouls. So 61-41. This was a 16-16 game at the end of the first quarter. Uh, but Lewis Cass has struggled a little bit offensively since then. And Logansport has really turned on the offense during this third quarter especially. Now she connects with another one. Now 13 points on the game. And Deardorff lets it fly with one second to go. Just off the mark. And Logan Sport with the 61 to 42 lead over the Lewis Cass Lady Kings. This is the Logan Sport Savings Bank Cass County Invitational on 94.9 FM and 12:30 AM WSAL. At Logan Sports Savings Bank, we know how important a home is to a family. A home is where a lifetime of memories are made, a place you come to rest after a hard day of work or school, a place where families gather to spend time together and celebrate the milestones of life, and a place to raise your kids as they grow and learn. Owning your home where you can make all this happen gives you peace of mind and security. Lending rates are at a historical low, so the time to buy is now while rates are down. Visit or call Rex or Dee, Dee at Logan Sports Savings Bank to Day and let them help you create memories of a lifetime for you and your family for a brighter tomorrow. Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. Logan Sports Savings Bank, we're leading the way. For your personal business and ag needs, we're your friends, your neighbors too. We enjoy leading the way for you. Logan Sports Savings minutes to play. We're going to ground to our fourth quarter. After a 16-16 first quarter tie, Logan Sport has really turned up the intensity on the defensive end and offensively well. Taylor Pasquale yeah. just on fire. Continues. Yeah, Pasquale with four three-pointers now. 18 points on the game. Has been really impressive. And Hummer Kaus, as she's tried to kind of put the team on her back, now this time forces one. Pearson picks it off. She's taking it all the way to the basket. And a nice Euro step in the finish. Very nicely done that time. That was under, beautiful. Com under complete control the whole way. And now Logan Sport still with some man-to-man -man pressure. Yeah, Megan Ben single-handedly disrupting uh, Lewis Cass just inbound the basketball on the last couple of possessions. Yeah, I've seen Ben play some incredible defense in the past. And now a long rebound. Hicks, the freshman, trying to get a quick shot off, but uh, no rim on that one. And now Logan Sport with the ball with 7.25 to go in the game. Good sportsmanship that time between Madeline Hoff and Olivia Pearson, both aggressively going for the ball. After it was all said and done, they slapped hands, said good work. 
And now, once again, Pasquale for three. And once again, Joe, it's good. Has she hit a rim on any of these no, three pointers? She has not. Nothing but net again. 21 points for Pasquale. She's making a strong bid to be a tournament MVP the way she's yeah. playing tonight. She's got my vote, Joe. And now Minnick from three from the wing. A nice, nice rebound, I thought, from Brown there. Ball got loose a little bit of Hoff with pulled it away from her. Now the ball in the corner, Hummer Kaus. She drives down the down the uh, baseline. And it looks like she's going to draw a foul possibly from Ben here. Yeah, going to be on Ben. And again, Hummer Kaus being very aggressive, taking the ball to the basket. Yeah. Under complete control at all times, it seems like. Again, I'm, I'm amazed that Lewis Cass only has one win on the season. Since they have, they, yeah. They've got some good ball players. They compete at a very high level. I agree with that, Joe, for sure. And now Hummer Kaus, another nice pass inside there to Minnick. Just off the mark, they come up with the ball back into Hammerkaus, and she's going back to the line for seems like about the 20th time yes, tonight, Joe. Like, and again, Paxton, that uh, extra possession kept alive by Paxton Hicks on the offensive glass, just a freshman. Again, I'm curious, to, I'm, I'm wondering how much these freshmen have gotten to play here for the yeah. Coach Cons and the Lady Kings, because they have, especially her and Menon, have been outstanding tonight for Lewis Cass. If they haven't played much before, they'll be getting minutes oh, the yes, rest of the, the year. for sure. And that'll give Lewis Cass some depth. No question about it. And just, and just freshmen, this uh, sets the stage yep. uh, for them uh, for, for uh, in the future with just three seniors on this roster. So Hammer Cass lets it fly on her second free throw, and it is good. That gives her 14 points on the game. And Pearson pushes the ball up the floor. She's looking under the basket. Going to be a high ball screen there by Emily Cry. Pearson all the way to the basket. Oh, in and out just around the rim, and she'll go up, and that's going to force a jump ball. And again, Madeline Hoff, what a contribution she has made in this second half after spending much of that first half in foul trouble. And again, Megan Ben single-handedly uh, disrupting the inbounds play for Lewis Cass. And she's going to chase Hummer Kaus all the way down the floor where Pearson was set up for another charge. And now a weak side rebound by Hicks, and Pearson pulls it away from her. Now Pearson on the fast break. She's looking up ahead. She's going to take it all the way to the basket with a Euro step, and she's going to score. With a left-handed finish as well. Nicely done nice. by Olivia Pearson. 14 points for Pearson on the game. As Deshaun drives all the way to the basket, going to kick it to Hicks. Reversal over to Minnick. She lets it fly for three. Hits some front rim. And is that a foul on Pasquale? Uh Oh, on uh, Emily Cripe. Emily Cripe. Val and Emily Cripe. Okay, I, I read the referee's lips across the way. It said box out. I, I was with you. I thought maybe she called it on Pasquale, who was boxing out her uh, her defender. And I guess that is four fouls on Cripe, and they're going to pull her, Justine Brown, back in the game for the Berries with 6.02 to go in the game. Well, and, what a luxury for Coach Cooper to be able to bring yeah. Justine Brown with one of her big girls in foul trouble. Yeah, I like their depth, Joe. No question. I do, too. Minnick with a uh, post-entry pass to... Looks like it's going to be a foul on the floor. And uh, Lewis Cass ball, I'm assuming. Uh, foul on Megan, Megan Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Megan's, uh, and that's She's like, I did what? I, I don't, uh, well, I'm not sure there. Again, not a lot of contact, but uh, but that's, that was a long way away. That is her, that is her fifth foul. Yeah. So wow. uh, her, her night is over. But, man, what an impact she's made on this game. So Raven Helderman. All right. Her first appearance, she played some good minutes on the JV game tonight, the, the JV championship game that the Logan Sport uh, was victorious in. So Raven Helderman, a uh, six-foot-tall junior, number 55. So she's getting some minutes here late in the game. And so Hemmer Kaus, she's back to the free throw line, and she's going to let it fly. And that one rolls around off the mark. Brown with the rebound. Rodriguez pushes the ball up the floor. And a nice back cut by Pearson. Oh, man, all day long. And Pearson once again scores. That's 16 on the game for Pearson as Logan Sport continues to put some full court pressure on. Great pass by Jillian Rodriguez that time. Great movement without the ball by Olivia Pearson. And this time, Humber Kaus is going to throw it over the head. But somehow Deshaun able to pull it away. Now she's going to let it fly. And, uh, and Hoff just runs down the middle. No one else was getting the rebound, but she was off the mark. Rodriguez on the fast break, lets it fly off the mark, rebound by Pearson. She puts it up, Kripe with the rebound, and she, or uh, Helderman with the rebound, and she's going to draw a foul, and it's going to be on the floor. And that's uh, Madeline Hoff, so that is her first foul of the second half. So she picked up three in a hurry in that first half, uh, has played the entire second half wow. without, without committing a foul, finally picks up her fourth personal foul. Uh, Coach Collins 
got to be thrilled with the way she's played aggressively despite those three fouls here in the second half. Yeah, I've really been impressed with her. And now underneath, Rodriguez finds herself open, and she's going to score two. Great movement without the ball that time from Rodriguez. Good find from Ellie Deardorf. And uh, it's uh, all Logan Sport now up 72-43. And now Hummer Kaus on the wing. She's going to pull back. She throws a skip pass over to Deshaun. Deshaun lets it fly for three. It's off the mark. Once again, Justine Brown right around the ball, but it's stripped away. And now Kings with the rebound. Deshaun with the ball. Dishes it. Now the ball going up top to Minnick. She'll let it fly for three, and it's good. Uh, no hesitation at all that time for Mallory Minnick. Had a good stretch in that first half. Has not been able to get it going, unfortunately, here for the Kings in the second half. So no. Got a reach and foul on Lewis Cass. So Pearson drives around her defender. She's going to draw another foul, and that's going to send her and only six team fouls on Lewis Cass, so they're one away from the bonus. Taylor wrote a ball. So Just Pearson. a freshman with her first foul. So Pearson inbounds it to Deerdorf. Deerdorf running the set play. Now Pearson flashes across. Pearson with a nice drive, and she kind of scoops it in, but it's no good. I think we're going to get a charging foul. As, uh, Megan Deshaun did a nice job taking that charge. Olivia Pearson uh, smiling about it, so um, she's a, a lot better person than I am, that's for sure. I, I seldom smile after I commit a foul, but uh, that is the fourth on Olivia Pearson. Unfortunately for the Berries, they've got a comfortable lead here at the 425 mark of this fourth quarter. And now the Kings throw it back, and they're just trying to beat the 10 second. Now Hummer House all the way to the down, but that ball stripped away. And we've got Deerdorf on the hustle into the floor. It's going to be a jump ball and good to Logan Sport. So 4.17 to go. Uh, so Logan Sport will be victorious, just like their JV squad earlier tonight, beating Lewis Cass in the uh, championship game of the JV. So Pearson drives down the court. And nice reverse pivot. Now Rodriguez throws it over to, and now Helderman underneath. Rebound almost again by Brown, but Lewis Cass able to pull it out once again. And now Hummerkaus. Good pass that time for Rodriguez to Helderman. She uh, just did everything yeah. to finish, unfortunately, for the Lewis, for Logan. And now Deshaun letting it fly once again. This one will connect. That's eight points for Deshaun. And Pearson with the ball with 3.45 to go in the game. As the Berries look to put a few more points on the board tonight. Oh, now a nice steal there almost by Rotoball. It's going to force a jump ball. And Lewis Gass gets it on the arrow, I believe. So, yeah, this uh, Lewis Cass Lady Kings team fighting to the bitter end. That's, uh, they're competing out there. Uh, without Maya Martin, though, they just uh, definitely shorthanded yeah. here in the second half, and that's when Logansport uh, really started to extend so, and, and blow this game open. Well, if you believe in moral victories, which I do, Joe, I think Lewis Cass has to feel pretty good overall about this and like they've made some progress tonight against Logansport. If, if nothing else, uh, some of those freshmen get some quality varsity minutes. And once again, Hummer Kaus down low, and she's just got to be gassed at this point, Joe. She's played almost the entire game, and I know she's frustrated, but uh, she's just exhausted at this point. You can understand missing that basket. Yep, and she might uh, have to get some ice on that elbow. She's been uh, made a living at that free throw line, uh, doing a lot of shots. So once again, they look down to Hummer Kaus. She bullies her way in, and a nice two, and that's going to give her 16 points on the game. So 3.05 to go as, uh, as the boss. And that was easy. All right. And okay. So I'll tell you, Brian Strong, he's a, he, does, he does so much for us. He asks yes, he does. so little in return. So one time a year he asks us to do something so we're, we're happy to oblige for like i said for everything he does for us so deardor finds pearson down low she's going to draw the foul from rota ball i'm really impressed with the way the logan sports moving without the yeah. ball especially on some of these inbounds passes here especially here in those last couple minutes here of the fourth quarter uh, rodriguez pearson uh, deardorf um, interchangeable parts one one passes one moves yeah uh, that they've uh, well, they've got this is a, an impressive looking basketball team and Pearson just off the mark, but you know what they do really well is move without the ball, and they're, and, and oh and yeah, that's supposed to be two shots, wasn't it? Yep, okay. You know, but they're inside out, they work it down the post. Good job, you know, Brownie. <laughs> and they work it down to Cribe inside out. Really like the way this Logan Sport offense looks. 
our, our good friend Chris Brown taking charge on that uh, <laughs> scoreboard. I like it. Yes. All right, so it looks like it's going to be another free throw for Olivia Pearson, who's made a, a pretty good pitch for the MVP of the Invitational, along with Taylor Pasquale. We'll see who they end up going with tonight. Ellie Deardorff also a really strong game with 15 points. But did our statistician, Blake Isaacs, did he get a ballot? That's that's uh, that's what I'm curious to find out. I don't know. That could be the uh, deciding vote. That's right. And Pearson hits her second free throw. Gives her 17 on the night. He might have wrote in Jordan Poole from Michigan, uh, for all we know. So Hummer Cows all the way to the basket. And uh, Helderman tries to, or Kripe tries to slow her down. Pearson rips the ball away. And she's going to pick up another foul from Rotoball. And that's going to send her back to the free throw line for the one and one and that's just, that possession sums up what the kind of night has been for Lewis Cass. So very close and just, just missing just by a little bit. Hummerkaus, a great drive to the basket. That ball was halfway down. It rims out. Paxton Hicks has the ball in her hands, and it got it stripped away. Yeah. They, they're just a – I know that sounds crazy, down by 20-plus points, but uh, just a couple of little things, if they could shore up, the, they, they've got a chance to, to have a pretty good season. Yeah, I'm with you, Joe. So as Pearson eyes her second free throw, lets it fly. Once again, it's good. That gives her now 19 points on the game with 2.50 to go in the game. And Hummerkaus once again brings it up. Brian, as she's just been pushing it all night. Brian Strong has just confirmed he does have a ballot from Blake Isaacs in this possession. <laughs> so we'll have to wait and see how, how that all shakes out. Ho hopefully these will be posted to the media so we can <laughs> check them. And Minnick lets it fly for three. And she goes flying to the ground. It looks like that one hurt a little bit. Yeah, Pasquale closed out to, to try and box him out. Wedged out a little bit. To, a little bit of contact. To, and Minnick's in a little bit of pain. As I always tell my players, rarely are you going to get called for a foul on a closeout, so do it. I've seen it happen once yeah. this year. So a little uh, inside baseball from Coach Isaac. So if you play against his team, uh, alert the officials beforehand, what they might do. <laughs> oh, Pierce got great a, spin move. A snaking move down the lane. That's going to give her 21 points. She has really stepped up her game here in the second half. She has just taken over uh, for 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 Logan Sport. And what's really been a team effort, Joe? Oh yeah, like really so has. many girls in the mix tonight doing a fantastic job and uh, that ball's going to roll off of the Lewis Cass defense as Deardorff tried to inbound it. And I think and Coach Cooper a brilliant job of uh, rotating those players in yeah. early and often keeping fresh players on at all times. That was a decided advantage they had over, over Lewis Cass was the depth and I think that has uh, come to fruition here in the second half. I totally agree. It was a great game plan, Joe. So Cass brings it up to Sean. She pushes it up. Now the pass over to Heimer Cass. She drives. Let's it fly on the left side, off the rim. Now a foul away from the ball. Saw Rodriguez go flying to the ground. And it looks like, oh, they're going to call that one on Logan Sport. I believe on Jillian Rodriguez. <laughs> Look on Jillian's She's face. She's like, what? Are you kidding me? I got knocked flying, and you're calling the foul on me. <laughs> but when you have a 26-point lead with under two minutes to play, yeah. you can live with those calls. And Humbrick House, again. We'll have, to get to, we'll have to get Blake Isaac to do some research. What's the what's the record for most free throws in a game in, in the Logan Sports Savings Bank uh, girls tournament? Because if Hummer Cows doesn't have the record, she's got to be awfully close. I totally agree with that one, Joe. But that's give, give her credit. She's uh, done a great yeah. job, been aggressive, taken it to the goal, uh, and not satisfied with settling for the jump shot. Uh, she's been very active. Uh, the officials, as a coach, you know that, uh, Coach. They're going to they're gonna reward the, yeah. aggressive, the aggressive player more often than not. Well, she will once again let it fly from the free throw line, and it's gonna be good. So that will earn her a second shot. And she's now sitting at 17 points on the game. And she's left a, she's left a few at the free throw line and a few in the low box. Uh, it's a, an impressive ball player. Yeah. And it is good. So now 18 points on the game, as she's gotta be making a uh, really good push here for the all tournament team. Uh, she's done a fantastic job tonight. And Lewis Cass still, they won't give up. Full court pressure. And Deardorff handling it pretty well. Behind the back, across the 10 second line. She's going all the way to the basket. And she's going to draw a foul from Rotoball. And Rotoball's got to be. Uh, she's picked up a bunch of fouls. Yeah, there she in a has. Hurry. I've lost track, honestly. At least four, if I'm not mistaken. From fifth up. Uh, he did but I like, the, I like the strategy by Coach Collins going full yeah. court pressure. You're not going to, nothing against this game. They're probably not going to face a, a, a lot of guards as good as Ellie Deardorff. Yeah. Uh, if, if they can uh, right. uh, work on pressuring her, uh, perhaps that will uh, 
pay off dividends down the stretch. Yeah, I totally agree. So Deardorff connects with her first free throw. That gives her 16 on the night. And just a second. So she's got a chance to, to be a real special player here. For, for a time, she's got a chance to be really special before her career is over. Absolutely, and she'll hit the second one, too. 17 on the night. 144 to go in the game. Logan Sport on top, 79 to 53. Thank you for joining us tonight. Good, de good defense that time from Pasquale, knocking the ball off of Humbrick House, bounced off her leg out of bounds. Logan Sport gets it on the turnover. Pasquale, 21 points on the night. As Cass continues to pressure, Deerdorf blows by the defense, just past the free throw line. Now her shot gets blocked. Good defense by Lewis Cass. Hoff pulls it out. And Hummerkaus pushes it up once again. This is one's going to be off the hands of Mallory Minnick, who's also played a ton of minutes tonight. But you got to really respect this effort by Lewis Cass. Yeah, I think she was trying to shoot her pass before she uh, secured that uh, pass. Uh, unfortunately, another turnover. But uh, the Kings uh, acquitted themselves well, despite the, the one-sided uh, score here. Uh, they, they competed. And still Olivia Pearson diving on the floor. The crowd wanting a travel call. And now Rodriguez finishing another nice two, and that gets her double figures on the night. 105 to go in the game. So Logan Sport with over 170 points in the tournament wow. in the first two games. 92 against Pioneer, now 81 here tonight. And now Brown with the steal. Pearson pushes it up, hits Pasquale. Now she dishes it to Helderman, who is blocked. She gets the ball back, and she's going to draw the foul. And I think that will be the fifth on Madeline Hoff. But I think if you to ask Coach Collins at halftime, hey, Madeline's going to foul out with 48.6 seconds to go in the game. He, he would take that. And Absolutely. She, especially as hard as she played in the second half. And when she had three fouls in what, the second quarter, yeah. was it? Yeah. She, Early in the second quarter. Yeah, impressive game by Hoff. Really a lot of positives to take away if you're Lewis Cass, in my yeah, opinion. No question about it. I think it's all said and done. It was a successful tournament, a 20-point win against Caston to get their first one of the season. And they competed with the Berries for a, a quarter and a half at the very least, if, if not longer. Uh, I think the lack of depth, I think, really hurt Lewis Cass. But with Coach uh, playing some of these freshmen, uh, perhaps that may not be an issue as, as yeah. the season goes forward for Lewis Cass. I couldn't agree more. And Pasquale hits her second free throw. It's going to give her 23 on the game with 46 seconds to go. And Deshaun up top. Look for Cass to continue to try to push something in here. Now... Hummerkaus once again going to her left. She's going to score now 20 points on the game. Good finish that time from Hummerkaus. Under complete control. A nice soft touch at the rim. And Pearson up top. We'll see if they try to score again with 23 seconds to go. Looks like they're going to kill some clock. Rodriguez with a high ball screen. Pearson continues to dribble up top. They're going to try to kill the next 14 seconds. And now they're calling a timeout. Going to be a 30-second timeout for Logan Sport. But, uh, Joe, just a, a good night of basketball all the way around. Uh, I, just, I can't get over Logan Sports offense. 92 yeah. points on Wednesday night, 83 tonight. Uh, Blake Isaacs uh, quickly did the math for me, 175 points wow. in, in two games. Uh, just just in, uh, very impressive. It seems like they, they did it rather effortlessly. I didn't see the game on yeah. Wednesday night, but uh, uh, they, just, uh, they, they were clicking on all cylinders offensively tonight. Yeah, and this should give them some really good momentum uh, going forward. And earlier in the night, Pioneer overcast in 41-39. And what was a, a barn burner of a game came so down was. to the last seconds as a Pioneer hit their free throws to win the game before time expired. And now here with 10 seconds to go, Pearson over the 10-second line. And they run a play for Justine Brown. Not quite able to finish. Rodriguez gets it. She hits it, too. They'll give her 12 points on the night. And that will wrap it up. Here at the Berry Bowl, the Logan Sport Lady Berries with the 85 to 55 win over the Lewis Cass Kings. So this is the uh, Logan Sport Savings Bank Cass County Invitational on 94.9 FM and 12:30 AM WSAL. Logan Sport Savings Bank, we're leading the way. There are many banks to choose from, and most of them are fine for most people, but a bank that understands business, more importantly, your business is a whole other animal. 
We are where business people like you find financial solutions to keep your business strong by offering unique solutions and helping with daily cash flow needs, fund equipment purchases, improvements, and expansion plans. Logansport Savings Bank has business cash management services to help keep your business running smoothly. We offer businesses innovative services like remote deposit capture that lets you make your daily deposit right from the convenience of your own desk, and standing behind every loan is the friendly customer service of the Logansport Savings Bank team. We are local business professionals with the expertise your business requires. If your business needs a bank that is not part of the herd, you need Logan Sports Savings Bank. Call us today at 722-3855 or visit us on the web at www.logansportsavings.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Logan Sports Savings Bank values their customers and offers local lending, servicing, and underwriting for your home or business. Hi, this is Rex Betzner. You can contact me to help you with all your personal and mortgage lending needs. And this is Mike Shropshire. You can call me for all your business banking needs. All of us from Logan Sports Savings Bank invite you to give us a call at 574-722-3855 to refinance or help you with your purchase. Logan Sports Savings Bank offers local solutions for personal and business banking needs. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. The Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Tourney continues with the boys' basketball teams on Friday, December 22nd. Pioneer will play Logan Sports. <laughs> County schools playing for the Logan Sports Savings Bank Cass County Tourney Championship Trophy. Logan Sports Savings Bank leading the way. Alongside Steve Isaacs and the legend Josh Hopper, who has presented the Logan Sport Lady Fairies with the Logan Sport Savings Bank Cass County Invitational Tournament Championship, a hard fought 85 55 victory over the Lewis Cass Kings. And I know, Steve, this is uh, may sound hollow to some of the Kings fans, but uh, this, this didn't, did not feel like a 30-point game. It really did. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Joe. Um, you know, Lewis Cass, we talked about their lack of depth, but their bench players were able to come in and give a really strong effort. And, uh, you know, they weren't quite able to keep it close in the second half. They continued to play hard. And uh, really, until the final buzzer, never gave up. Yep, congratulations to Olivia Pearson, named the tournament MVP. Also named it to the all-tournament team. Maya Martin and Apra Hummerkaus from Lewis Cass. From Logan Sport, Taylor Pasquale and Ellie Deardorff. And then trying to think back to Caston and Pioneer. That was a good two hours ago. How could I, how could I be expected to remember so that? The uh, all-tournament team. The all-tournament team. Oh. Yeah, it was... 